Lazar approaches Dwight and slams his desk. Max didn't work out. He was a weak male I just wanted to crush. Fear, anxiety, confusion. Dwight feels them all. How is this guy the CEO? More than that, he wanted to crush the employee he's replacing for being... for being... a weak male. Dwight doesn't even know what that means. Weak male? Who talks like that in this day and age? His hands fidget nervously. He swallows a growing lump in his throat. Lazar smashes his desk again. I need you to be bolder than him, Dwitch. I need you to get the buzz out there that we're the best company in the business. Did he just call me Dwitch? Dwitch. He just called me Dwitch. Dwight's still not sure what he's supposed to be doing at Peak 22. He's a story hook supervisor. He has no idea what that is. Sounds convoluted and made up. Sounds like bullshit. He took the job because he needs the money, and he can't dress up in costumes for birthday parties anymore. Kids can be so cruel. He's supposed to create fake profiles and write positive reviews about Lazar and his company. Lazar gives his desk another thump. Be a lion, Dwitch. Pounce on the internet. Pounce. Get the word out. Peak 22. We design story hooks for ads that transcend humanity. Dwight has no idea what that means. Lazar leaves a test on his desk and walks away. Dwight stares at the test, unsure. Rose, the manager who hired him, approaches him and explains it's an intelligence test. Lazar wants to make sure he's the smartest in his company. Best advice? Flunk it. Dwight smiles. Gotcha. Our thing is story hook advertising. Dwight cringes every time he hears story hook. Lazar's trying to be different just to be different. Most advertisements use stories to wrap a message in emotion. Just because you call it a story hook doesn't mean it's new, doesn't mean it's different. Story hook is a term used by high school English teachers. Rose laughs. Yes, but Lazar's an idiot and he wants to feel like he created his own theory for his upcoming book. Dwight's eyes go wide. Book? What book? Rose laughs absurdly and explains. An autobiographic book, a guaranteed bestseller, highlighting Lazar's new theory on creativity. But Lazar hasn't done anything yet. It's all smoke and mirrors. Rose laughs and corrects him. He's done one thing really well. He's burned through millions. Rose changes the subject and tells Dwight he needs to meet Lazar's ghostwriter for an interview. Make sure to shower praises about our naked emperor for his autobiography. Dwight approaches Rose. She isn't her usual jolly self. Dry tears line her cheek and her eyes are swollen. She tells him Lazar embarrassed her at a meeting when she refused to go along with his jokes at the expense of the sound designer's speech impediment. He humiliated her for not going along with his stuttering impression. Rose sighs and advises Dwight to record all meetings with the Naked Emperor, not just for legal reasons, but for the yearly roast. Dwight raises his eyebrows curiously. Yearly roast? What yearly roast? She tells him about a yearly gathering of ex-employees who get together to laugh at Lazar's stupidities. Dwight tilts his head. He's really confused. In his mind, Peak 22 just opened its doors. How long has Peak 22 existed? Rose calculates on her hands. Five years. Dwight can't believe his ears. Five years and Peak 22 has nothing? Rose smirks. Correction. Five years, and we almost have Lazar's biography and his theory on creativity. Dwight showers Lazar with online praise using fake profiles. It's the coziest job he's ever had. As he prepares to create another false profile, he suddenly hears shouts coming from Lazar's office. He freezes as Lazar verbally assaults the Peak 22 lawyer. 
The lawyer is telling him Story Hook can't be registered. It's a concept in many high school textbooks. Lazar fires the lawyer on the spot. The lawyer promises he'll sue. Lazar doesn't care. He'll settle. He always settles. It isn't his money. And Dwight's heard he's got his benefactors eating out of the palm of his hands. He's already settled dozens of wrongful dismissals. Rose attempts to calm Lazar down, but he screams at her to mind her business. Dwight wants to help her, but he's never made so much money doing so little before. He likes making money doing nothing. But his hands are fidgeting, and his palms are getting damp and clammy. Hearing Lazar verbally abuse Rose is difficult to bear. He imagines all kinds of scenarios where he leaps from his desk to help her. Nervousness fills his bladder, and he leaps from his chair and rushes to the bathroom. The Brilliant Mind, Inc. Lazar announces the title of his autobiography to the entire office. It feels like a joke, a bad joke, but it's not, and the studio is trying not to laugh at the naked emperor. Lazar hasn't done anything in the five years since he convinced a bunch of millionaires in his storyhook revolution. He doesn't even have one successful advertising campaign. They had a few clients in the beginning, but Lazar wanted to write and direct the commercials himself and made a mess of everything. Dwight suppresses a laugh. Rose claps when Lazar concludes his presentation. Amazing, paradigm changing, how gracious of you to share the secrets of your success with the world. Everyone gets her sarcasm except Lazar. That's the thing about narcissists. They believe their own press release. Lazar turns his attention to Dwight. Dwitch, what do you think? Dwight suddenly feels the blood drain from his face. He echoes Rose. Amazing, paradigm changing. How gracious of you to share the secrets of your success with the world. Lazar smiles. It's not about ego, Dwitch. It's about community and selflessness. Lazar screams at Rose because she can't find a publisher for the Brilliant Mind, Inc. Peak 22 has done nothing and creating campaigns with a story hook isn't really paradigm changing. The publishers think he's an idiot. Why is he saying story hook when he means story? Ads with a story? A story with a story hook? Rose calms Lazar down. She suggests that they should self-publish. The idea silences Lazar. You're right. You're absolutely right. The publishing world isn't ready for my visionary ideas. Dwight sighs and finds it harder and harder to listen to his bullshit. Peak 22 is going nowhere fast. The company is having a hard time finding clients and recruiting with all the rumors of abuse. Lazar announces he has a solution for recruitment. He'll write a story hook recruitment campaign to attract the best employees. Hundreds will apply. Thousands. Dwight doesn't understand. For what? Dwight still isn't sure if Peak 22 does anything other than enable a narcissist to do whatever he wants to whomever he wants. Lazar is spreading rumors about Rose. Dwight consoles her, but she's inconsolable. She says it's a pattern, his pattern. He discredits, destroys, and demolishes an employee before he fires them. He spreads the rumor he later uses to fire the person. Dwight says she's exaggerating. Rose shakes her head. Lazar's in trouble. He just spent more money on a one-minute ad campaign for Peak 22 than a Hollywood blockbuster, and his investors want answers. He needs a fall girl. Someone to blame for the mismanagement of company funds. Dwight doesn't understand. She explains that Lazar's already left a trail of blood in his wake. The last three women in her position were all promoted and fired for Lazar's excesses and stupidities. Lazar has an upcoming meeting with his investors. She will be this year's patsy. Dwight gives her a skeptical look. She shakes her head. You'll see. He spends the money. A woman takes the fall. That's Lazar's idea of equal opportunity. Dwight stares in disbelief as Lazar asks Rose to present the advantages of storyhook advertising at an all-hands meeting. He interrupts her on every slide in front of everyone, then cancels the meeting. 
He acts as though it's the first time he's seen Rose's deck. He announces Rose has no idea what a story hook is. Everyone leaves the cafeteria feeling bad for her, grumbling that no one knows what he means by story hook or how stupid he is for using a contrived term that just means story. Dwight doesn't understand because she validated every slide in her deck with Lazar. He heard them agree. Before Dwight can talk to her, she is fired and escorted out of Peak 22. Dwight watches his friend, a single mother, walk out. This year's patsy for Lazar's excesses. He siphons the investment money and his friend gets the boot. The whole meeting was a setup to discredit her in front of everyone. Lazar approaches Dwight. Sorry, Dwitch. I know Rose was your manager, but I had to let her go. She wasn't aligned with our company values. Dwight stares at Lazar in mingled shock and horror. What values? He wants to scream at Lazar. He wants to grab his ears and rip them out of his narcissistic head. Instead, he nods and silently prays there is justice in the world. Dwight listens in disbelief to stories of Lazar. Real-life horror stories. Stories that defy reason for this day and age. It's a yearly ritual for those who have had the misfortune to work with Lazar. They've all gathered to watch the leaked Peak 22 recruitment video. Dozens of people, each wearing a white Peak 22 t-shirt with a ridiculous Lazar quote they scribbled on with marker. One of them worked with Lazar at a production company where he tried to produce a terrible web series he wrote. It's about an alien computer that takes over the world and controls its inhabitants with a matrix that simulates reality. No one told him he just pitched the premise of a major blockbuster film. She imitates Lazar selling his web series. It's different. It's unique. It's not horror. It's not sci-fi. It's terror. Sheer terror. It's a new genre. It's simulated terror. Lazar believed he had created the next big genre like cosmic horror. The writer shows a book written by Lazar, Simulated Terror, Guidelines for Writers in His New Genre. They all burst out laughing. Dwight laughs so hard it hurts. Who says story hook when they mean story, or simulated terror when they mean sci-fi? The stories of the naked emperor continue throughout the night, and Dwight is convinced there is no justice. Peak 22's ex-story hook supervisor talks about how Lazar called him a weak male for not wanting to cyberbully a blogger for using the term story hook. He tells them about a harmless drug that makes people laugh absurdly at every little sound. He says if he was still working at Peak 22, he'd give Lazar a little taste of his own medicine. Others agree that would be hilarious. Dwight likes the idea, likes it a lot. It might be that justice works in mysterious ways, he approaches Max. Tell me more about this harmless drug. Max hands Dwight a mix of his laughing drug. It will make him giggle and laugh so much he'll piss his pants. Pour it in his coffee right before his meeting, and you'll have a story hook unlike any other for next year's roast. Dwight smiles. He feels his heart pounding his chest. Rose will have justice. Everyone will. Dwight will teach this abuser that sometimes the little guy bites back. Inspired, he asks one of his colleagues to distract Lazar while he spikes his coffee. Another colleague listens to the plan and shakes her head skeptically. She isn't sure. She doesn't like this prank and cautions Dwight to think things through. I've got two kids, she says, and the last thing I want is for the investors to close down shop because he hallucinates or hurts someone. Dwight laughs. Don't worry. The most that will happen is he'll act like a donkey. Dwight lifts his chin proudly and reassures her no one will get hurt. He places his hand on her shoulder and feels like the leader he always knew he's been. Nothing bad will happen, or my name isn't Dwight. Uh-huh. 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 
Ah! 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 Ah!